just keep their uh, their microphones muted and their videos off. We have a lot of people on today, and so we need to protect everyone's bandwidth going forward. Um, so I'll just give a few more seconds for people to go um, to come on there. Uh, I, if I could suggest too, as we are going to have a lot of people on here, uh, that you make sure that you uh, keep yourself muted, uh, keep the video off, and also uh, click speaker view up in the top. Uh, I'm up the top of, of Zoom's got speaker view and it will just show the person who's speaking. So uh, thank you everyone who's joining us today. Uh, you know, as always with these, this is our third Calm is Contagious session. I just wanted to start out with the date uh, because these things are changing so rapidly. So it's the 1st of April, sorry, the 2nd of April, Thursday, the 2nd of April at 11.30 a.m. Brisbane time. So these things, everything's changing so rapidly that we just want to make sure that we're clear of when this is on because this is being recorded. I will say that it is being recorded and uh, it's actually going live to Facebook for the first time. We're trialing that uh, on our Stratton Mason Lawyers Facebook page. And uh, if you've got any questions, uh, please feel free to, to start putting them in the comments. And um, if you are watching this on Facebook, I'll say this a couple of times, uh, we have posted the link to the Zoom uh, room and you can join us there. So yeah, if you could just make sure we keep our videos off, please, uh, for the moment, uh, just because of the bandwidth as more people get in. All right, so I want to first of all thank um, all the experts that, um, for making the time today to come on here. Uh, we've got uh, Roger Hawley, Jackie Strawn, Ashley Rees, and Craig Mason. So thank you everyone for making the time to be on there. I also wanted to thank all the participants for making the time to be on, on here. Uh, we're all very busy. There's a lot going on. The world has changed in a ginormous way uh, over the last couple of weeks. and I want to thank you for being on here. And I just wanted to remind everyone that this is a time to stop. This is a time to stop and to pay attention to this webinar. I would strongly encourage you for the next 60 to 90 minutes to turn your, turn your um, internet browser off, turn your emails off, stop all notifications if you can do that, and just focus on this because this, this is your time. We're giving up our time and want to be here to help you to get as many answers to as many questions as we can give you to help everyone through this because we're all in this together. I'd like to just start out, if you if you are so inclined, in the chat to just share some wins. I think uh, all too often, especially with, with all the stuff that's going on here uh, and in the world at the moment, we're, we're all very much in, in the space and, and all stressed with everything that's going on. But I know that there are lots of good things happening in the world today, lots of people who are getting really good wins. So if you like, uh, and if you, you feel like sharing it, jump in the chat and just share some wins. And I'll, um, I'll share some of those as we go. Uh, but I think it's really important that you know, calm is contagious. That's the theme of, of these webinars. And it's really important that we, that we make sure that we're acknowledging the wins and, and doing all that stuff. So please share those. Um, as I said earlier, use the next hour put your phone away and close down close down all of your, your internet browsers and everything uh, and really focus on what we're going to talk about today. Be present. Uh, know that we're all in this together, as I said. And by being all in this together, we will all get through this together. That's what that's what we're here to help you. We're all here to do that. Right right now, all of the people who are presenting today, and I'm sure you know, everyone on this call is fielding uh, so many telephone calls, emails, you know, We've been inundated with questions and, and, and people seeking advice. And that's cool. That's what we're here for. We want to help everyone. But yeah, this time is here to uh, having the, the time to actually talk through things and ask the questions so that we can all get the same, the, the same resource and the same reassurance. So uh, if I can ask everyone to take a deep breath, I will start with Craig in a minute. Uh, before that, though, I'll just go through the structure. So yeah, the, these, these calls are very structured. Uh, Craig uh, Mason, who's my uh, business partner in uh, SMS Law, is going to talk about some of the legal uh, considerations right now. Uh, then Ash Rees from uh, Ray White Northern Corridor is going to be talking through some of the changes with the real estate. Jackie Strawn will be on to talk about the uh, some of the HR things. We've covered a lot of that recently, and I know a lot of you have got the questions uh, about that. So I'd love to see uh, your uh, questions on that for Jackie, and then Roger will come up la um, last in the in the talks uh, to just talk through the uh, what you know, the, the the package that was announced. Uh, essentially, the Job Keeper program uh, that that was announced on Monday. Uh, this is uh, from my perspective very exciting. There's a lot of good stuff in this that will help a lot of people and keep a lot of people employed that might have not been otherwise. So that's the structure we're going to talk. Then after that, we're going to have the opportunity to ask questions. 
I'm going to, as I said earlier, for anyone who's joined us late uh, or who's watching this on Facebook now, I will be uh, turning off the Facebook Live at the question time because I want everyone to have the freedom to ask questions without it going live if you've worried about any uh, any confidentiality. Uh, and so I will uh, yeah, I'll be ending that. So if you are watching this on Facebook, and I will say this a couple of times, feel free to click on the Zoom link and uh, you'll be, um, you can come and watch us in the Zoom. If you do watch us from that, I'd love to get you to just to private message me your email address so that I can make sure that you're on these because this won't be the last of these sessions that we do. We will be doing more because yeah, this thing is just getting started and we want to help everyone get through it. All right, so that's that's enough from me. I will just quickly share some wins. So thank you to those of you who have. So Craig uh, talking about the resilience of our team and their ability to adapt to change and embrace changes. That's been a big thing that, that we've noticed. Uh, Jackie uh, have negotiated a number of new employment agreements for employees. That's excellent news. I think it's really important that we that people are seeing uh, what's going on and that uh, that we're still employing people and and doing new new agreements. Uh, Monique, um, I've got an amazing team of five other people who have had to change their entire way of doing their job by transitioning to doing telehealth, speech therapy sessions via the, uh, online via Zoom with kids as young as two years old. Wow, uh, that's really cool. Very different to face-to-face -face sessions. My team have jumped on board with that question. Uh, Monique, that's awesome. Uh, and, and that shows the adaptability. You know, We hear it all the time, uh, but it's great to see, or well, we hear all the time how people need to adapt in this changing circumstance. And it's awesome to see that you're doing that. Uh, and Ash is, um, <laughs> Ash Reese from Ray White. I've been threatening to host a webinar for two years, two years and now dot, dot, dot. We're, we're, we're all in, in it now. So look, uh, please feel free to share any wins that you have, uh, post any questions that you've got. We will get to every single question uh, today. And if we can't answer them today, then we will uh, get into them later and, and come back to you on that. So without any further ado, I guess I'll, I'll hand over to Craig uh, to, to start off with what, um, what he's going to talk about from a legal perspective. Craig. Uh, hi, everyone. And as Jeremy said, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Craig Mason from SMS Law. So in terms of a legal point of view at the moment, so there's been a lot of changes that have come through over the last couple of weeks. We touched on those uh, in last week's webinar, uh, the bankruptcy uh, changes, insolvency law changes. They've all started now as of last week and are now taking hold and uh, you know things have changed in the sense of uh, the debts have increased from 2000 to 20 and the timeframes have increased. So those things are now in, in, in existence. The main thing I wanted to touch on today was that over the next period, you'll be having a number of conversations with uh, landlords. Uh, if you're a landlord, you may be having conversations with tenants and agents. Uh, you might be discussing things with your suppliers regarding the terms of payment, uh, deferring supply or cancelling agreements. And you may well be having discussions with your customers and clients regarding your payment terms, deferring your agreements and or potentially cancelling agreements. So now and over the next period when you're doing these discussions with suppliers and landlords etc it's even more important than ever to ensure that any compromises any agreements any negotiated deals that you come up to are put into writing uh, because in the long term when all this gets sorted out and we're back to what um, we might consider to be normal from a business point of view having these agreements in writing so you can refer to them and ensure that they are uh, still uh, able to be complied with in the future will be um, vitally important. So this goes in all circumstances, um, if you're a customer or uh, if you're the supplier to make sure that you're negotiating and putting it in writing. So if you're doing it via the telephone in the first instance, follow it up with an email confirming this is what we've agreed to. Uh, the best case scenario would be to having an actual agreement where you negotiate, where you negotiated a deal and you're signing off on the changes to whatever it might be. Uh, Ash will probably touch on this in relation to leases because that's going to be one of the bigger ones uh, and what's going to happen with those. Uh, but it's even just supplier agreements, uh, terminating agreements, all that sort of stuff. Vitally important to make sure everything is in writing. Jeremy, that's all I wanted to really touch on from a legal point of view today that's um, I consider to be the most important thing. Uh, obviously, I'm here for any questions as we go along from any other things that might come up. 
no worries. Thanks, Greg. Uh, yeah, I think all of that's really, really important stuff. So um, as I said before, I'm just going to reiterate this again. If you are struggling to see anything, anything, um, you might be have the view like the Hollywood Squares or the Brady Bunch. Uh, you can click on Speaker View, and it will actually bring up the person who's speaking um, in all their glory on the on the page. So uh, I'll continue on uh, with Ash. Um, do you want to unmute yourself and turn your video on, mate? And share with, with what's going on in the real estate space? Yeah, can do. Um, so I'll touch on a few points um, quickly today. So um, I'll try and clarify the current landscape, which obviously is changing really quickly. And then I'll move on to how we're handling um, uh, tenant and owner cases, because that's, um, you know, as the, as the golfer would say, that's the shot in front of us right now. Um, so the, that for, for most people, that's the, that's the urgent question is, um, how do I, uh, how do I deal with my lease? How do I deal with my tenant? And then just at the end, I'll uh, touch on a few opportunities that we're seeing as well um, for, for some win-wins and some, um, some positioning for, for future upside. So um, the landscape as it sits right now, changing really rapidly, but the common trend we're seeing out of the government has been clear for about two weeks. And that is they want owners and tenants and property managers sit down, talk it over and come up with an agreement. So um, that whole thread of you sort it out or we will ha remains um, remains pretty common. Um, and for the most part, this is happening. So um, there has been a fair bit of um, talk around uh, the word, you know, termination through frustration. Um, you know, I'm not the, the legal expert on this, but I'm hearing it getting thrown around a bit to, um, to be a potential reason for uh, tenants or landlords to um, to terminate leases. Um, my feel is um, the tone of the conversation over the last few days makes me think that's increasingly unlikely to happen. Um, and probably that's been driven um, in what I'm seeing by a combined effort from, um, which was a bit surprising, so that tenants and landlords, um, the major associations, so uh, Australian Retail Association, National Retail Association, Pharmacy Guild and Shopping Centre um, Council of Australia, they've all got together and presented a kind of a united recommendation to, um, uh, to the government on um, the fact that uh, uh, termination of leases is not supported um, uh, and we believe should not be programmed on their, um, on their statement. Um, so the National Cabinet is meeting tomorrow to try and lock down a package, um, but I, I believe that that'll take lease terminations further away from the table uh, and it'll be most likely a combination of rent deferrals, rent waivers and, by the landlord and then having that cost offset by a potential drop in council rates and even potentially land tax as well. So. Um, Nothing, nothing on the actual legislative front for, and this is just, sorry, commercial, commercial, industrial, retail leases, not residential. Um, I was even just reading right before we came on about the, um, there is a, um, a support mechanism in there for residential. I'm not fully across that, but on the commercial front, as it sits right now, they're relying on the, the support, the indirect support that's coming to tenants um, through, um, through the other stimulus programs and then owners um, being supported through deferred bank payments. That's pretty much where the, the landscape sits on, on that front. Um, now there's a assistant treasurer made the statement, there's a moratorium on evictions, but not a moratorium on the requirement to pay rent. So we're having, you know, um, a half truth is a dangerous thing where some tenants are coming and go, well, Gal, we've just heard we don't have to pay rent for six months. Obviously that's not the case. If um, if tenant yeah you know, tenants are still bound by tenants and owners are still bound by the lease that that is in play all the all the terms remain the same there's just that um, moratorium on uh, on actual evictions so um, there so the the general vibe is communicate communicate early um, and and be transparent this hasn't stopped some of the um, kind of industry bullies, I guess, would be the way to do it. Um, so, you know, on the, the extreme version on the on the owner's side, you've um, you've got John Van, probably the biggest property owner, saying, you know, suck it up and pay your rent. On the other side, you've got Solomon Lou going, yeah, can't pay the rent. 
Um, and the, uh, you know, that's the clash of the Titans. They can, you know, they can figure out what they do there. But for the rest of us, the, um, the middle ground is, um, is come together, talk and, and get a, uh, um, get an agreement. Now, how are we handling it in house? So we've, our management teams had, as of this morning, 111 requests for um, assistance from tenants. Um, now that's uh, about a quarter of our portfolio, of our, of our tenancy portfolio. So it's a you know, substantial amount and that number's not going down, obviously. So we're expecting more. So we've set up a, a system that helps everyone get through that. Um, and it's just trying to be as transparent as possible. So we've got a, a seven step process I'll run through really quickly because um, I want to make sure we've got time for individual questions that everyone's going to have off the back of this as well. Um, so step um, step one is is know where you stand. So that applies to both owners and tenants. Um, so read your lease, check your loan terms, check your insurance policies, and just get a and and get advice. Sorry. So um, you know talk to the talk to the experts and know what your obligations are. Um, two, know what you want to achieve out of the process. Um, the yeah, it helps you set your your hard nose, so you know what you what you can you know, kind of negotiate on and what you can't. Step three, and this probably should happen right up front, establish healthy communication from both sides. Everyone's scared, everyone's vulnerable, um, and the head in the sand right now from either side is a recipe for disaster. So um, approach your owner, approach your property manager, talk to your tenant, get in early, and just establish that dialogue because there's, there's still an element of pride on all of this um, that we have to overcome to, to get through. Um, the best advice I can give for tenants um, is quantify the impact. So show you're seeking a rent reduction as a last resort, not a first resort. If you do that, if you come to the table with, I mean, I'm struggling to pay the rent, but I have done this to help my business. I've sought this, you know, this um, incentive. I've tried to, you know, pivot my business in this way. And here's the actual numbers on the impact of my cash flow. That's a completely different conversation for us to have as property managers with the owner. And it's a different conversation for the owner to have with their bank because the bank is, before the bank gives them a, a reduction, they are asking for the same thing. They're asking for um, the quantified impact on the business. So um, it's not a, a um, you know, a Caesar thumbs up, thumbs down approach from landowners, you know, from property owners in this. It's a, um, it's an all in this together kind of approach. And the, the more work you do up front as a tenant to, to show true impact, then the better, better outcome you're going to get. Um, so step five is be deliberate with your decisions from both sides. Um, slow is fast with a lot of this because the landscape's changing so quickly. We're putting solutions in place to alleviate the, the immediate um, as much as anything fear and, and panic, take the panic out of it and then we can truly assess on the numbers. So we're, sometimes we're just doing this um, month by month, you know, um, either one month or two months just to come to an agreement, let the dust settle and see what we're, we're looking like um, you know, once we come into June or, or, um, or end of May. So, um, and six, be open to different structures. Um, so uh, from both sides, you know, everyone's situation is different and a, a slight pivot in um, what, uh, what, gets the, what gets a tenant through today to be able to boom tomorrow um, is, a, is worth, it's worth exploring all, um, all avenues and it's, it's achieved through, through conversation because there's a lot of talk about a, um, a potential um, V recession, they're calling it, where because there's no real impact to infrastructure um, and the, the general economics coming into this were pretty good, there is a, uh, a theory of a, 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 a quick bounce, a quick drop and a quick bounce back um, and making sure that, and that government's policy seems to be with that hibernation, that making sure that businesses are ready to flip the lights back on the day that they announce it and, and that, that ramp up can, can happen quickly. So keeping that in mind when we're structuring um, what the support today for the, for the future benefit looks like is really important. Um, and seven, back onto the first, um, first point with Craig, document everything. You know, handshakes are good in, uh, in wartime to, to get us through, but out the back end, we've all got dusty memories. So um, document everything, overdo that. Um, finally, the opportunity element of it um, is there's some, um, we're seeing some potential for owners and tenants to invest in infrastructure. So uh, fit out solar, new store expansion, because there's some, um, 
some stimulus benefits there with um, uh, depreciations and write-offs. So um, with owners, now could be a time for defit, refit and solar uh, of vacant tenancies. Um, lease structure is an important one because there is actually opportunity for both sides in creating a new lease structure. Owners, if you're looking at selling any time in the next term of the lease, then giving a, um, a holiday now to be able to potentially up the up the rent on the on the back end. Yeah, every thousand dollars in rent is fifteen thousand on the on the property value down the track. So um, there's some there's some win win scenarios there. Um, and the in the general property opportunity we're looking at is you know what's being forced on us today that will be the new norm tomorrow. So um, home deliveries, work from home share space office, all of that kind of thing is where we're going to start looking. Um, but uh, that's all I've got now. Thanks, Ash. Um, so uh, as always, if you've got any questions for Ash, please put them into the chat box and we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, Jackie, uh, would you like to go next, please? Okay. Okay. Great. Well, thanks, Ash. Wow. What a hard act to follow. You have um, been extremely busy. Um, pr the previous week um, where we gave the wrap up of from a HR from a number of our points of view, but from my uh, my previous two webinars here have been chock-a-block with information. Uh, this one's a little more a light on, uh, but there have been moving goalposts since our la in the HR world since our last uh, webinar last week, and that has been the job keeper allowance. Now, uh, Roger, being the accountant, is going to give you all the ins and outs of that, so I'm not going to go into too much detail there. But that has uh, moved the goalposts for a number of employees, uh, depending on their situations, but uh, some who are eligible for uh, one and not the other, and, and even to the point where we, uh, some clients have rehired people who have resigned and things like that, so that these uh, those employees can now access the job keeper payment. So um, again, communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, so I was gonna say um, document everything. Um, like Craig said, like Ash said, please document everything when it comes to any arrangements, any agreements, discussions you're having with your employees. Uh, you never know when that's going to help you um, if um, the truth isn't uh, remembered or twisted or what whatever might happen. Um, if you've got it documented, uh, you just know it's there. So uh, it could be useful to rely on if you have to. But um, communicate uh, with your employees, I guess, is my main uh, point today. Uh, not leaving them in the dark, This, is, although, you know, it's, it's a nightmare what's happening. Uh, it is an opportunity to um, deepen and strengthen some of those ties, despite what's happening, um, those ties of commitment and loyalty with your staff. Uh, so really keeping them in the light as far as uh, what you are doing. So if you are, if you do feel that your business is, um, you're eligible for the JobKeeper allowance, which is uh, a drop in income uh, by the 30%, but again, Roger will go into the details. You can register for the JobKeeper payments, um, which is one and a half thousand per employee each fortnight. It's um, to be passed on uh, two employees, which is fantastic, um, and it's a flat figure. Is <laughs> some people will actually end up uh, getting the getting that money, and it's more than they usually get paid. But that's the way the government's gone. Um, now, one important point to note is the employers can decide. They've left it up to the employer to decide if they are going to pay super on that ad those additional job keeper uh, payments on that extra earnings. So. Um, so back on the my last point on the um, communicate, uh, just make sure that you're advising them. I recommend advising your staff that if you are applying for that JobKeeper payment, 
send them an email uh, if you're seeing them verbally let them know send them uh, communications that they have been um, deemed as eligible for the job keeper payment and if um, the business is able to get it then it will be passed on to them and that they will need to if they do receive it they will need to contact um, services australia and let them know of this uh, money coming in because it will be deemed as income uh, so it can affect other payments that they may be getting through Centrelink. So um, other than that, uh, everything else is in the previous webinars that we've done when it comes to um, variations of employment contracts, uh, stand down, leave without pay, all different scenarios. There's a number of scenarios that will suit um, different people in different situations. So um, yeah, uh, HR Tactics is, is here and fielding a lot of calls. So if you are uh, looking for clarity and you're just feeling overwhelmed and unclear about things, certainly drop uh, drop us a line. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Jackie. Um, and as always, yeah, um, feel free to ask questions now. But yeah, as um, Jackie said, we've covered a lot of ground with employees over these three webinars. So please feel free to ask any more questions. That's what we're here for. Uh, and so uh, without any further ado, uh, Roger, are you right to go? <laughs> Uh, just for, for anyone, uh, we've had a couple of technical difficulties um, due to some of the, the fun of working with Zoom. So Roger is logged in with his daughter's computer, I think. So um, thank you, Roger. Uh, and if you're ready to go, you can... Yes. Go. Yeah. So morning, everyone. Thanks, Jeremy. I, I've actually missed uh, the, the first half an hour of the webinar. So if I if I do repeat something that's already been said, um, please bear with me. Um, so I'll just bring my... Uh, I'll just share my screen and bring my slides up here. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about uh, the coronavirus stimulus package round uh, three, which has probably been the most exciting one to date. So let's spend a bit of time on it. Um, as as with all of them, or most things so far, none of this has been legislated. And some things are quite clear, where others are still open to interpretation. So when things are clear, we'll state that it's clear. When it's, uh, when it's still open to interpretation, we'll, we'll state that as well. So this is the third round of economic uh, stimulus measures. Uh, was brought out a couple of days ago, and this one's just all about focused on business keeping their employment, keeping their employees. So everyone's now heard of the new word job keeper. So what's this job keeper all about? So I'd like to spend the next uh, ten or so minutes going through that, and um, and then have some questions at the end. So I'm, there will be a lot of questions. Uh, as an accountant, I've been inundated uh, by my clients with, with di different questions. Some some I can answer, some I can't. So um, I'll, we'll try our best to answer as many as we can. So the government's to pay employers 1,500 for their eligible employees, and uh, the, the payments start in May. Um, so what that means is, Everyone that was on the books from the 1st of March, who is an eligible employee, which I'll explain in a minute, uh, is eligible. The employer is eligible to receive 1500. So I'll go through and explain what an eligible business is, and then I'll explain what an eligible employee is, and um, and then we'll go through some of the specifics after that. So an eligible business is a business that has lost uh, 30 percent. Uh, in its turnover. So its turnover has gone down. So that's your sales and your revenue. It's it's not your profit. Um, and the comparative periods is uh, is 12 months prior. So you need to look at what you did in March last year and compare that to March this year. Um, that's for the historical comparison. But if you feel that there's going to be cases when uh, you're because Corona actually started quite late in March, some people, they won't have noticed that much of a drop down or drop when they compare the two Marches. So there is some ability to foresee that your business is going to go poorly in April, May, June. And uh, that that makes you eligible as well. Because you, your business might've been going quite well up until uh, March. And, um, but you know that you've lost all of your contracts and all your business may have been shut down completely. So the, therefore, April, May, June is going to be uh, far greater than, or the, the loss of 30% will be easily achieved. That uh, that will make you make you eligible. 
Um, the ATO or well, Treasury did issue a notice this morning uh, that the ATO will have uh, discretion. Oh, they will be checking uh, this uh, the turnover uh, decreasing in in taxpayers, and they do have some dis discretion uh, to show some latitude. Because obviously, with a lot of people, this is an estimate. So you may believe right now that you're going to lose 30%. However, when all things get said and done and you lodge your June bears, you may have only gone down 25%, but they do have some discretionary there uh, to, to show some leniency in those cases. Uh, probably where they won't be lenient is if you, if you haven't lost any money uh, during the coronavirus. There are industries out there that are actually booming uh, due, due to the, uh, the coronavirus. So if those guys start um, applying for these kind of incentives and stimulus packages, then they will most likely be looked at uh, when this is all said and done. The eligible business is very broad uh, as to the structure that you're trading through. So trusts and companies are automatically included, but the beauty of this one, it also includes sole traders. Uh, so people that are just got their own ABN, uh, they might be contracting out for a construction company or, or whatever it may be, uh, they're eligible as well. What One big question that I get asked here is, what about the scenario where you've got a mum and dad company uh, with no employees, so effectively they run a business and the profits from that business uh, run through the company are filtered out to mum and dad at tax time each year. So that's effectively their, their director's fees or their wages. That hasn't been addressed directly. Um, so it is open to interpretation whether they're eligible for JobKeeper or not. The, the way it's worded, I think they may be, but I'm not 100% certain. And it, and it definitely hasn't been released at this stage. Uh, so what would happen to mum and dad companies with, with no employees and also trusts that are in the same situation where you've got mum and dad who operate through a trust and they receive a trust distribution at tax time each year and that, that is effectively forms their taxable income. So what happens to in those scenarios yet, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. So what I'm advising my clients to do is to register their interest uh, for as an as an eligible business uh, for the job keeper, um, fingers crossed they will be included as well. So, what's an eligible employee? So, they they are someone that was employed at the first of March, twenty twenty. They can be full time, part time, or sole traders. And uh, casuals need to have been employed for longer than twelve months. And uh, here's a new a new word. Actually, gig workers are also included. I wasn't I wasn't familiar with with a gig worker previously, but I now am. So th so that includes your your sole traders, their IABNs that that might do a project here and a project there for for certain companies, because um, obviously their project work is going to dry up. So those kind of people are included as well. Um, here's a few specifics. So one interesting thing that come out of this is some employees may actually get a pay rise and uh, to, to 1500 a fortnight. So if, somebody, if somebody's normal wage was say 1000 a fortnight, uh, you would continue to pay them the 1000 but then they'd also get a top up of, of $500 on, on top of that. Uh, uh, superannuation, the 9.5% the is not payable or it's voluntary. Like if you have the capacity to pay, well then by all means you can pay it, but it's it's not compulsory on the on this fifteen hundred, and this is uh, fifteen hundred before tax, so the gross payment is fifteen hundred. So where applicable, you will need to withhold POAG and, and pay your employees the balance. So in most cases, employees won't receive a net a net amount of fifteen hundred. They'll receive the gross fifteen hundred minus tax, and then they'll receive the net amount. There's quite a few employees that have been stood down um, in the last week or two, and assuming they were they they passed the previous mentioned criteria, and they were on the books at the first of March, then they still may be eligible. So the way it works, and this is probably the the hard part for 
particularly micro businesses, um, or most probably most businesses actually, to be honest. The employers continue to pay the employee as usual, and then they're reimbursed by the ATO. The problem with that, the reimbursement doesn't take place until May, and uh, we've only just started April. So that's a lot of wages uh, that need to be paid. Like for example, if you've got 10 people on the books and your business has been completely shut down, i.e. you're not allowed to operate, you might, you, you might be a beauty salon or, or, or a gym or something like that, and you have 10 people on the books, it's gonna be very difficult for, for that type of business to find $1,500 a fortnight for each employee for the month of April, even though they're gonna get reimbursed in May. So that, that's something that, that I don't think has been addressed properly and I, I don't have an answer because it, it's going to create immediate cash flow issues for, for businesses that have been, uh, that, that have stopped trading completely, but they still want to keep their, their employees on. Um, so there's going to be, I might flip it over back to Jeremy and um, we might open up and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of questions. So I deliberately, I deliberately kept it brief Yep. Uh, yeah, just so um, people have the opportunity to ask questions. Yeah, and um, so Roger, if you want to stop sharing, uh, just so that, that that comes down. I will stop um, sharing. Please. Thank you. So uh, yeah, I'll just reiterate what Roger said. Yeah, this was passed on Monday. So there will be, ch there, there's a lot of detail that we don't know yet. And we've been you know, researching and trying to get on top of this as, as best we can. And so we're going to give you the information today. As I said previously, we will, we will be doing more of these. So, uh, you know, as, as more details are known. So Roger, I'll give you a, a, a little bit of a break and just, um, Jackie, I know you have to leave at 12.30. So I just wanted to um, come to the questions for you. Uh, there's, there was one that I saw um, from Carolyn. I don't know whether you saw that one, but if you have a casual who, I'm oh, oh, sorry, before we do the questions, I forgot to end the Facebook Live. So if you're watching Facebook Live, please click on the link and you can um, join the meeting. Got a lot out of this. Uh, Roger, uh, I'll just give everyone the chance to ask another question, but do you want to just sum up and, and then I'll get Ash and Craig to just sum up anything and then um, and then we'll, we'll let everyone go for the, for the day. Yeah, so... I guess the this fifteen hundred job keeper package is is good. Like I think the Courier Mail come out and said that uh, uh, it was six six million people are going to have their jobs saved. Which I guess if it if it actually turns out to be reality, that's a great thing. Um, the nuts and bolts of of how it gets accessed and ultimately paid to people. There's just so much that's up in the air, so much that's not clear. So my advice to everybody is is if you think you're eligible or you're you're not sure whether you're eligible or not is register your interest because as as the questions uh, surface and 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 the government becomes aware of of the different people and their different scenarios they are showing that this is the third package now and they're already showing it that they are prepared to adapt and be flexible that the I'm I'm not getting the normal draconian approach here from the from the ATO. Like it, it is it is very flexible, and and there will be mistakes made, and and provided that you can show that your intention isn't to defraud the system, and 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 you are struggling, I can't see how they can um, throw the book at at anyone, provided you've done everything in good faith, and and you're not trying to defraud the system. Yeah. I think you're one hundred percent right there, Roger. Mm. Uh, just and, and document, 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 and, and document all your decisions. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Craig, did you want to add anything on? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, thanks, Roger. That was all really helpful for for me as well as uh, everyone else that's attended. So thanks mm. for that. And I think, um, as you've said, there could be some leeway there that um, traverse that carefully and obviously don't do anything that smells a little bit but um there's probably some leeway that you can take advantage of that uh going forward but still be still be careful so and document everything if it comes to that as well with your employees if you're changing any uh, uh terms or uh anything like what jackie was talking about with their earning less than the 1500 and now you're getting to work more so you can pay them 1500 and 
those sorts of things to just document that. So yep. thanks guys. Thank you, Craig. And thanks everyone who's um, posting in the chat. Uh, thanks for the, the webinar and everything. Um, it, it really helps us to know that we're helping everyone. Um, you know, the purpose of these webinars is to help all of you uh, to get you through this and get through as, as a community together. And um, that's why we've put the structure in place and why we're doing this uh, and why we're taking the time out to help as many people. So um, thanks for that. Ash, did you want to just say a um, few words to finish up? Yeah, just to probably finish up from my end, um, the two real takeaways from me on the on the property side uh, um, communicate and document so open up that communication I mean our our job in real estate feels like um, is just to be the minister for awkward conversations that's kind of what, what our job is all day every day have the convos that people don't want or facilitate those convos so uh, reach out have a chat we can help with tenants or owners um, even if we're not in the mix I've got the whole team basically just in problem solving mode for for everyone at the moment um, so it's um, yeah we're here as a resource I'm just going to hit I'm going to add a link into the um, into the chat for our survival guide that's a it's a live document we update that um, as soon as yeah anytime that it needs updating so save that there and it's um, just some delight reading but always available for a chat whenever needed great thank you Ash and we'll include that we'll send out an email uh for uh, everyone with a, a copy of the recording minus the questions uh, and with all the other information, including a, that link. If anyone does want to and you want to um, save any of the questions or any of the information, if you open up the chat, uh, there's a, uh, three little dots uh, that has the word more when you put your mouse, mouse over it uh, and you can actually save a copy of the chat uh, for yourself uh, so you can see what's there. So, uh, we'll, so we'll be in touch uh, either this afternoon or tomorrow with a link to all that information. It is actually the first part of this was live onto the SMS Law Facebook page. Uh, so if you did want to get onto it sooner rather than later or revisit any of that information, uh, feel free to go there. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Roger, Jackie and Ash will share it on their respective business Facebook pages as well. Uh, I wanted to share everyone's um, email address for everyone there. Uh, so that's uh, Craig's, Ash's, Jackie's and Roger's. So feel free to contact any, any of them. Uh, you'll have mine because you'll get the emails at the end of this. Uh, I've just wanted to just reiterate as I have before, just remember that we're all in this together. Uh, it's really great to see the comments that we've been getting uh, and the appreciation people have had for these uh, webinars. That's why we do it. We're, we're here to, to help. Uh, Carolyn has just posted, posted when's the next session. It will probably be Wednesday or Thursday next week, Carolyn. Uh, we are just determining that based on when news comes out. So we want to make sure that these are as useful as we can. And so we'll let you know. I'll, we will post it and we'll email it out to everyone as soon as we know. Uh, but factor in Wednesday, Thursday, uh, because that's about when we've, when we've known this stuff. So remember to stay calm. If you're feeling overwhelmed, reach out to any of us uh, and we're, we're here to help and we will get through this. So thank you everyone and have an, a great day and we'll see you next week. Is that, so if everyone can just leave the meeting, that's greatly appreciated. If the, um, the panelists could stay in here, that'd be great too.